We're joined by live at front bench and Matt Thistlethwaite. Matt, thank you so much for your time. Good to see you, Annalise. Now, just off the back of that ICAP report from Stella Todorovic, what have you made of the latest that's come out? In the, not much this morning yet, but um, certainly some pretty damning revelations so far. Yeah, the revelations out of ICAC are certainly uh, quite concerning and uh, no doubt uh, in the wake of that there'll be a review of what's gone on there. Um, I think Jodie McKay... Uh, acted decisively and, and did the right thing. Um, the inquiry's got some weeks to go yet, so once all of the evidence is concluded and the Commissioner hands down the findings, there'll no doubt be a review into some of the practices at New South Wales Labor and hopefully we'll be able to put in place some measures that make sure that these sort of things never happen again. Christina Keneally came on and said that maybe the answer is to move out of Sussex Street, the traditional headquarters of New South Wales Labor, that that would help a cultural reset. You're the former yeah. New South Wales Labor Secretary. What do you make of that proposition? Um, yeah, look, it's a, it's a good suggestion, but I think that the problems go a little bit deeper than that. So they'll be certainly have to have a review of, of what uh, the evidence that's been presented and what's gone on there and the findings um, and make sure that we do put in place changes to make sure that these sort of allegations can never be levelled again and uh, that they have their, their practices in place to make sure that compliance is 100% adhered to. Certainly going to be an awfully big task for whoever gets that particular project. But if we turn to the politics of the day, uh, cashless welfare cards are front of the agenda. We've just had Jackie Lambie on saying um, the drug testing aspect, that she just doesn't see how she could support the government on that. Do you support, firstly, her push that MPs should be tested if they're going to go ahead with this? Would you be happy to go, undergo a drug test when you come to work? I have no problem with undergoing a, a drug test, and I think most MPs would. But uh, we don't think that uh, what's been offered by the government is appropriate, given that you're talking about people who may be on new start. Um, the majority of those people are over 55, probably genuinely interested in getting back into the workforce, particularly those older workers that may have been made redundant, uh, having problems getting back into the workforce because of their age. I'm not sure that it's going to help asking them to pee in a cup or provide a hair sample once a month as a condition of maintaining new start. So that's why we've got some big problems with this bill and that's why we've opposed it in the past. What the government's saying is that people aren't going to be given any less access to the, their welfare, even if they do test positive. They have to fail two tests in a row and then it'll still be the same amount of money. It just will be quarantined on what they can spend it on. So they can't spend it on drugs and they can't spend it on alcohol or gambling. A lot of Australians would think that that's quite a reasonable prospect. What, what is your issue with that? Well, the role of Newstart, Annalise, is to try and get people back to work. And I'm not sure that those measures actually achieve that. And where these things have been trialled in the past overseas, they haven't worked. Um, because when you talk about drug addiction, all of the best evidence throughout the world at the moment, and indeed in Australia, is that you should be treating it as a health issue rather than as a pecuniary issue. And this approach that the government's taking won't work based on those international studies, won't get people back into the workforce. Therefore, you have to think that uh, you're wasting taxpayers' resources for little result. Ben Morton, Assistant Minister to the Prime Minister this morning, said that you can't expect to get a job if you're bombed out of your brain on drugs. I mean, are you asking small businesses to have people working who are on drugs and aren't competent to handle day-to-day -day tasks? No, we're certainly not asking that at all. Everyone that goes to work uh, should make sure that uh, they're not affected by drugs or alcohol and there are strict laws to ensure that uh, all individuals and workplaces comply with that. But this is about trying to make sure that people get back into the workforce when they're on new start and all of the evidence suggests that this won't achieve that that you're not actually helping people get back into the workforce and that's why we've got a big issue with these sort of reforms with the legislation that's on the agenda for this week it seems like the government really is trying to wedge labor on a number of issues including mandatory sentencing for pedophiles that's something where labor has never supported mandatory sentencing outside of even that do you think that the government is really trying to wedge labor on those issues and how are you going to respond most definitely they are. Um, you know, you've got the issues that you've just mentioned that are on the legislative agenda. What you don't see on the agenda this week is how they're going to deal with the flagging economy. Uh, you saw the Reserve Bank Governor with an extraordinary intervention last week saying that the government's not doing enough and should be bringing forward infrastructure investment. We've had two years of bad economic data, lower growth, uh, slow wages, low inflation, uh, rising unemployment, bad uh, investment, bad business investment figures, uh, low housing starts. All of the economic data has been there for, for several years now pointing to a bad situation. But the government won't react. and Instead, they want to bring these things into the parliament aimed at wedging Labor. Uh, it's the Australian people that are going to suffer because of this government's lack of plan around the economy.
Is it the government not reacting or is Labor not reacting? Because as Simon Benson pointed out, when those national account figures came out, and there was some bad news in there. Anthony Albanese was in Biloela advocating for that asylum seeker family, which he could have done any day in the last two weeks. And instead, on that critical day on that economic data, he wasn't in Sydney where he could be holding the government to the task on that. He was oh, in Biloela. No, I don't accept that, that at all. Um, Anthony was uh, were there for one day. But if you look at Anthony's comments over the last couple of months, uh, most of them have been about ensuring that the government develops a plan to deal with the flagging economy. And we made several suggestions uh, over the course of the last week, including Jim Chalmers' suggestion that we bring forward the MIEFO results, uh, that we can fix some of the forecasting problems that the government's had for the last couple of years to, to fix some of these issues. We've said bring forward infrastructure investment. We've said bring forward uh, the tax cuts. We've said develop a wages policy. These are all of the uh, policies that Labor's put forward to deal with a flagging economy that this government continues to ignore. There's still a lot of questions around Labor's policies on things like franking credits, on negative gearing, and there's been some suggestions in this report from the Financial Review that Labor should hold off until 2022 to decide what your policy platform is going to be until the next election. Do you think that would work, or is that going to be a huge vacuum for you guys to operate in for a few years? Well, what's important, Annalise, is that we get the policy mix right before the next election. Now, we accept that we didn't get that uh, right in the lead-up to the last election. So to make sure that we do that takes time. Uh, we've got the review going on at the moment. Those uh, findings will be handed down towards the end of this year. But in the wake of that, what we'll do is take our time to consult with the Australian public. So I'm a member of the economic team. I'm travelling around the country at the moment when we're not here in Canberra talking to local chambers of commerce uh, about the issues affecting them in particular uh, aspects of Australian uh, economic management at the moment. So we'll take our time. Uh, we'll make sure that we get the policy mix right before the next election. Is there anything in those conversations that's becoming a front-running issue for you that you think would be a significant change for Labor's policy platform? Um, look, the, the key issue for many people is the lack of stimulus around the Australian economy and the uncertainty at the moment and the effect that that's having on particularly uh, consumption. So if you talk to any small business in any main street in Australia, they're really feeling the pinch at the moment because Australians aren't spending. And that's related to low wages growth, it's related to a lack of a policy from this government to fix that. And they're the issues that I've been talking to the Australian people about and they're the issues that we're trying to hold this government to account on. Matt Thistlethwaite, thank you for your time. We'll look pleasure, forward to our chat Alice. again next week. Thank you.